Neil, um, Keith Downey from Sky Sports here. Glad to see you looking so well and um, what we think is back to your best. Can you just tell us a little bit of, of how the last couple of weeks have been for you? Uh, strange, really, because um, I was very fortunate I didn't get anything on my chest. Um, I just started with a little niggly, a little niggly throat and then lost my sense of smell and taste. And, uh, and then uh, originally... For the first few days, absolutely shattered, you know, wanting to go to sleep every minute of the day. So, um, you know, you've got no option but to look after yourself. You know, you just, you know, my son was with me as well, so he had to isolate as well. And um, and uh, so it was, it was it was strange. You know, the games, I felt, I didn't feel too bad in the games, if I'm honest, because I had a lot of, I had conversations before half time and at the end. Um, but it's nice to get back on the grass, you know, it's been, uh, it's always nice to, to, uh, you know, have contact with your players and, and start talking about how you see the next game, etc. It, it definitely sounds as though you had a, a number of, of symptoms then, Neil. Were, were, you, were you quite worried at one stage? Um, not really, just the tiredness, um, you know, it's, um, when you get older, when you get older to my age, yeah, you do, you know, you you want a nap in an afternoon or this, that, and the other. But with these, with this virus, you you're just constantly, absolutely shattered, and um, you don't feel like doing anything. So it's um, it's slightly different that, and I think you know, it took ten days. I mean, it can it can linger. I don't mean. I mean, in a way, it's been a blessing for me in the fact that I should have now some some you know some of these things I get that can fight it. Uh, in my bloodstream now so in a way it's a good thing for that but it uh, you know it's it was a very tiring experience for me and uh, the QPR I want I really wanted to go to QPR uh, and I felt good on the on the Friday morning but it was just the the thought of traveling hours on the train and then back on the bus and at the end of a two-week period like that I just didn't think it was worth it really and uh, you know, I, I, I was pleased with the lads' the response second half as well. Yeah, it must have been a, a really strange situation for you because you seem to have a very can-do attitude. You do a lot of travelling anyway from Teesside back down to, to Cornwall as well. How difficult was it essentially being being locked at home for a couple of weeks? Um, well, it's, just, it's not a matter of difficulty. You've got to do it. It's as simple as that. It's life or death up, you know, with this uh, horrible disease, uh, virus. Um, and it just makes you even more aware how careful you are, you know, we, I'm so careful, you know, I mean, I, I'm going around even my own house, you know, two, three times a day doing the surfaces and everything, you, know, you handles and I am getting a bit paranoid like that, but I think we've all got to try and do that. That's why it annoys me when I see 200 kids having a party, you know, they've no, it's not so much what's happening in their vicinity it's what's going to happen in the wider area when they go and speak to somebody else and somebody else and they must have uh, you know grandparents and parents that are older and have got problems and there's just not enough thought going on at times in certain areas which disappoints me at the moment any idea how you got it um not really i mean i had a a couple of hours with um our it lad was probably the worst off and he had he had a lot of problems with his chest as well, and he he had it beforehand. And I had a meet. I had going through the um, the game, um, the Bournemouth game. I had you know sort of an hour with him on his own in an office without any windows open or anything, you know. And you've got to have circulation. You've just got to do it. And I know we're in our own bubble, but um, you know I think it's it's oh my. I won't put myself in a situation like that again now. And it was interesting there, Neil, um, just a little bit more lighthearted. You were saying that you're going around the, the house cleaning all the surface, surfaces and, and whatnot and, and, and being really careful about it. I guess that'll be music to the ears of your wife. Yeah, I mean, she's in Cornwall, um, which I'm glad about as well, really, because, um, you know, she's uh, she's away from it all at the minute. She, she desperately wanted to come up and help um, in the situation, but I just felt she was in a safer environment down there. Uh, at this moment in time, with um, so many areas, surrounding areas around around the Middlesbrough area, etc. Um, and uh, so as soon as she can, she wants to come up, but um, I, I've managed to keep her away at the minute. But yeah, I, I don't think I told her about me doing all this um, 
uh, spraying them and working, etc. Because obviously, I don't want her to think it's going to become a norm in the years ahead. Um, we spoke to Kevin Blackwell last week, and yeah, sorry about that, lads. But you had to speak to him, you know. He was, he, it was really interesting what he said though, Neil, because he, he was talking about your, your levels of fitness and he said that you got a bike put into the house as you were as you were recovering from things. And he reckons it's due to the fact you, you look after yourself so well that you manage to recover from it from it so well. Does this kind of bring sort of sharply to focus how important it is for people, even in, even in their in their seventies, that they that they try and keep fit to try and to try and get through it? Absolutely, yeah. I think I think it's so easy when you get older to have a sleep and, and then have your dinner and then have a sleep and you get you you mentally you get really if you're not careful you get really tired and some people are a lot older than what they are and some people are a lot younger than what they are I just think it's it's a battle of your mind and even when I was younger as a player I used to look at my managers one manager in particular I remember who was really quite overweight and I thought ah, if I ever start managing I don't want my players to see me like that and I remember it vividly and it's, it's drove me on and I like my players to know that I'm training after every session um, and that you know they have a laugh because I have to have a headband on because I sweat terrible um, I show some of the lads I say look this you never do this you lot um, you know but it's uh, I, I like to do that to, to keep not just that but um, you know the heart and everything else that you look after you've got to look after as you get older and I think I think because I was that sort of that little bit extra fitness, I, I managed to keep it away from my my chest and everything, you know, and my lungs, and uh, doing exercises with that. So it's good, and I do enjoy my bike. I've been back out this week uh, on it as well, and uh, that does seem to help me with the fresh air as well. You know, it's uh, it's an amazing thing that we can do nowadays. You must have confidence now that you're that you're through it. It sounds like you're a lot better. Yeah, I do. I do feel good now. Um, I've not had a workout, a physical workout yet, other than on on me the bike that I took into the house. Um, but I will start doing my sit ups, etc. That I do a, a daily sort of program now. Um, I just thought let, I'm going to get this game out of the way uh, with the international break, uh, and then start building my own fitness up next week. Really. Yeah, in terms of your involvement for the weekend and everything going on in the background, what is it right now? Uh, no, I'm just fully here now. This, this is it now. You know, we're, try, we're trying to get our result against Barnsley. I think we've, we've played reasonably well so far this season uh, without getting the maximum points. We've got to be a little bit more ruthless. Um, we're still trying to bring players in. Um, you know, I'm sure that we'll, we'll be able to bring one or two in before the end of the window. It's just very difficult. This week, I wanted to hope that I was going to get a new face in before the weekend, but it doesn't look that's going to happen at the moment. <clears throat> um, and just, just last, just last, lastly for me before before I hand it over, um, you know, obviously up against Barnsley, it looks as though their manager's got a choice bet- right now between Barnsley or New York. The way the way things stand, don't ask me to choose one of them, will you? Because <laughs> I love New York. If he don't want to go there, if he wants to put my name in. I do like New York. I think it's a it's a special place where my wife and I have had a great four or five days is enough. I don't know whether I could go and work there. I'm sure, but uh, you know he's, he's doing well. At, he's doing well in certain areas, uh, according to the press. And um, I think it's an Austrian related club as well, isn't it, in New York? So uh, you know, managers of you know it's one of those things. You 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 um, you get offers and you decide, and over the course of your your career, you, I'm sure I regret certain turning certain jobs down, and likewise, I regret probably taking one or two. So it's it's what that's what it is in football. But it's nice to be wanted. I'm sure he'll be delighted to have uh, have been asked. Neil, thanks very much. It's glad to uh, see and hear you fighting fit. Thank you very much, Keith. Morning, Neil. Mark of the Beeb. Where are you, Mark? Oh, I've got you. I've got you, Mark. Yeah. Me. Yeah, got you. I'm not on my couch at home. Um, obviously, great to see you. Um, Given the fact that men over over sixty are being sort of warned that you know they can get symptoms worse, were you kind of worried when you got the the diagnosis that this might be a longer job? Well, I think you. First of all, I was very very surprised that I'd got it because I've I've been so careful. But it just shows you how how simple it is. 
to catch something. And uh, but once once I'd got it, um, I, I, I was determined to try and and do the exercise with my lungs, etc., to make sure I tried to keep those as wide open as I could. Because it's it, it is basically when you get the problems in your lungs as you get older, your breathing difficulties. So um, yes, I, I rested a lot and um, I listened to what the doc said to me, and and, and tried to you know to, to treat it like it was. But it's such a it's such a virus that you you know you've got very little. You, you are you are weak and you have to you know you have to recover as best you can. Presumably, you've had flu a few times over the years. I mean. Is it just far worse than flu? Um, well, I wouldn't say that my version was far worse than flu. I've had, I've had a, I mean, I'm very fortunate in the fact that over the last 15, 20 years, I've not really had flu since this flu jab come out. You know, that's why I implore everybody at my age to get a flu jab. Um, and although you, some of them, some people don't have it because they get an, in, they get a, um, uh, when they have the jab, they get an inflammation and, and a, a temperature for a few days sometimes, and it puts them off. But, oh, really, it's a, it's the best thing they can do. And, uh, um, you know, w- when I was younger, when I had a couple of bad vat bouts of flu, um, you know, that was, you know, it's surprising how that, you know, really is, is bad. Um, this one, I've not had it like a lot of people, you know. I'm very fortunate that I didn't get it in sort of March, April, May, when we didn't, I mean, by the looks of it, we didn't really know what we were doing, did we then? Um, whereas I think now we've got a lot more, even though things are, you know, the, the cases are increasing again. I think we can deal with it a, a lot better if, uh, if, if people listen to what we, you know, what's been the advice being given. Given the fact that you were recovering and well on the road to recovery, in fact, you were in the training ground last Friday, presumably you had an awful lot more input, input to the QPR game than you did to the Bournemouth game. Yes, I think, I think the, the QPR game... You know, I thought I thought Friday was important for me because I I did feel we could win the game at QPR and uh, I thought my presence would be would help a little bit in certain aspects. Um, but you know, it wasn't to be. I mean, I did enjoy the training ground and and what have you. And the players, you know, they're a good group of players. Without you know, I can't speak highly enough of them. It's just I think one or two lads if. If they are below the the normal standard, then we're not quite as good. We we need everybody to be a, that standard. And there were three or four players last week who weren't up to the normal standard, I would say, uh, which I think that just stopped us from getting the maximum points. How important for Tuba to get that so that opening goal? Well, any striker. I mean, you know, they're all really work. They're, they're a good. The three of them are really hard working lads. Actually. Um, has done really well and, and Brits never worked harder in his life so you know it's nice to see Tuba come in and, and, and take that opportunity great ball in from Paddy again and uh, you know it's a good header a lot better header than what people give it credit for really so uh, and obviously the League Cup there are different teams played etc but any bearing do you think the League Cup game and this in this game well I hope we can give him a better game um, I think they were quite um from uh, what I was what I was told, I think they were quite comfortable on the bench and the comments that were made. So I'm hoping that we can give them a little bit more tougher game than that. Fifteen hundred games, <clears throat> a landmark. I think probably when you were in Cardiff, you didn't actually think you'd quite get to. No, I know it's uh, uh, you just don't know what's around the corner, do you? Um, I mean, it's a great achievement. I, I do feel I've always loved the championship. You know, I've always known I've been the best. The big, you know, the, the the longest number of games in the championship now, um, but to get to fifteen hundred, there's not. I, I, it won't happen very often now. I don't think in the next few years, because quite simply, managers aren't given that opportunity now. You know, when I first came in, I used to say I want to build a club three or four years. You know, now it's three or four weeks or months. Uh, it's um, you know, owners are a lot more demanding now I think and everybody wants success it's all your guys faults all the media's fault they're all phone-ins and opinions and writing with this and writing with that and send me your emails you know you're all experts so it's it doesn't help the managers but uh, I still enjoy it I still enjoy I don't I enjoy doing my press conference as well with you guys I, it's part and parcel now that um, I think try and have a little bit of humor because there's enough you know enough things around at the moment to, to make you a bit unhappy. So uh, let's be positive, I think, w- w- when we can. Great to see you back. Good luck, Neil. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Hi Neil, it's Simon from Tiny Tees. Uh, you're looking very well. Hi Simon, um, got you. Did, what was it like for you, sort of trying to, to at least keep a grip on things remotely, doing it over the screen, speaking to the players over the screen while, while you're isolating? Well, it is diff- it's, it's not the same. Uh, it is difficult because, um, you know, the way I manage, I like looking players in the eyes. Um, and I like, you know, looking around the dressing room and I get a feeling before a game, who's on the game, who's not, before they kick a ball. You, you get that sort of feelings and, you, you know, and then um, when they're doing the warm-up, you get told that somebody might be a little bit below par and that's who I, you know, then I'll spend a few minutes with them. So it, it, it's not the same, but uh, it's, you know, whatever means must really at the, t- at the time. As you said, you've been reasonably happy with the, the performances so far this season, but, but how much would it be a boost for you and for everyone to get that win? Well, I think a win on Saturday would make it a decent start in the season. Um, you know, we've had difficult games, but you're going to have to play them at some stage. What's pleased me has been the performances. Um, you know, we've played different types of teams and I think we, you know, in most games that I can't remember, that I think we've been the best side, apart from making a mistake and, and not taking the chances, you know. So it's a matter of persevering. We, we look like we're going to have the same squad to pick from. I was hoping we, we were going to have another option uh, this week, although I think Ashley might be might be fit. I think he's training today, Ashley, so hopefully he'll be available. Um, and then we'll just have to see, you know, what else we can come up with. I, I suppose you were able to stay in touch with, um, <clears throat> with with the people in the club trying to work their magic in the transfer market, and, and, and I suppose you were able to keep involved in that way. Yeah, it, I mean, it's like everything else. Everything will happen next week, won't it? Really, I mean the. The international window, that shuts on on the 5th, doesn't it? Is it Monday? Um, and so, you know, then you, you can only have the loan, but you've got your loan players in front of the 10 days from Premiership clubs. And I think, I think a lot of Championship clubs now are waiting for that window because, quite simply, the money's not there now. Um, I don't see the money being there, and I wouldn't want to ask... Steve, or uh, for at the moment with this with the knockback from the fans, um, whilst I would love for another three or four players, I don't I don't think we can do that now because of the the financial situation. I think we've all got to realise what a difficult situation it is for owners of the club, none more so than 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 Steve, who's who supported this club through thick and thin. And I think we've all got to play our part. And yes, I'd love three or four top players. Um, but financially, it doesn't make sense now at this moment in time. I think we've just got to try and get that one extra player that I needed to change things. And, um, and then we've got to try and persevere till, till January, I think, to see how the, the whole situation is around the country, really. Final point, now that you've had your experience of COVID and you've come out, thankfully, the other side, has it, has it changed your opinion on the whole situation, the whole scenario? No, I think it just makes me a little bit more uh, more disappointed in in when I see the university at Coventry having two hundred people having a party, and and I, I, and I think when you're young, you've got no responsibility like that. The majority of university students are really thoughtful and helpful, and they know. But you know, you just get the odd the odd patch like that, and that makes me disappointed because you know they 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 might be enjoying the party, but it's life or death if they go home at the weekend or. They see one of the elderly relatives and there's no thought whatsoever there. This is a killer disease and uh, especially for older people. And I'd, I'd just like us to be a little bit more responsible, if I'm honest.